Okay, what I want to talk about, first of all, is kids' food. But I think what I want to talk about more than that, just going uh, back a couple of rounds, is really about positiv positivity in general. And so this lack of cynicism um, that I want to sort of encounter and get it started from ki uh, kids at a very young age. Because I think the whole thing that's happening now with food, food in general, you're lectured at far too much. And that's kind of rich for someone doing a rant. But we are, we're told to do this. Like with the vegetables, for example, you're told to eat five a day. Now, it makes it sound like medicine. What I want to do is start celebrating food. And I think this is the way that has to start with kids, first of all. I'm very involved with a charity called the Kids Cookery School in London. Now, it's the most fantastic charity. It's not sponsored by the government at all. They found it very hard to fund it. It's funded just by classes they do for able-bodied kids. But 90% or so of the classes are either um, assisted or free. Now, I have kids in there that will come in, and they'll have the most horrendous disabilities. You have kids who can't talk. You'll have kids who can't walk. You'll have kids who come from the most awful families. But they'll be able to escape just doing a couple of hours of cookery. And I've got to say, for all the different things that I do, it's the most satisfying of them all. But what it is, too, I think we've all got a responsibility for this, if you don't have kids, if you don't like kids, look, I can understand that. Before I had mine, I couldn't stand the little buggers, and I don't like anyone else's anyway. So, but the thing, the thing, the thing, I do, actually, I love them. Now, this, this is entirely not true. There I'm getting carried with my round. I have seen over now seven years of doing this with kids, how kids can get into cooking, and through getting into cooking, through having some involvement how they get into eating well. And now when I hear, and I hear this so often, and I see this often, you go to a restaurant, you have a kid's menu. What that is, is generally a menu with anything good and nutritious sucked out of it. It's chips and it's something fried. It's ridiculous. So instead of trying to make it more um, uh, exciting and easier for the parents and also easier for the kitchens there, they should just do half portions of the things they have on the menu. No, they have to give you stuff. It has to be chips. And it has to be something like chicken nuggets. There's always chicken nuggets or burgers or fish fingers, something like that, instead of real food. Now, when I talk about real food, like I'm not a small producer, I'm not a restaurateur, I don't do any of that anymore. I'm a cookery writer and I'm a cookery teacher. And I have been doing cookery schools now for the last 15 years. And I used to run Raymond Blancs, I ran Delia Smith's cookery school and I had one in the south of France. So I've done it at quite an exclusive level, but I've also done it just all over the place in little tents here and there. And often, often, often with children. I'm gonna do a cook along with kids tomorrow. Um, at the food academy down there. And I think the thing is, it's to get them excited and get everyone excited. And I'm not talking about always paying a lot of money for ingredients. I don't think that's the main thing. I think the main thing is to make it fun, to get them interested first of all, and to show them the magic that cooking it is. Because cooking is magic. You know, you see something like an egg white, and this always amazes me, you have an egg white, and you can turn that into a souffle. You can turn that into a meringue. You can turn that into a parfait. You can turn that into lots of different sorts of ice creams. If you're really desperate and there's something a bit wrong, you can turn it into an omelet, but I'd suggest using the whole egg for that. But it is a sort of magic. When you see these raw ingredients, you see them sitting there and you turn them into something that's delicious or something that's special. Like you make, in, in New Zealand where I'm from, we, at Christmas time, we make the most glorious of all desserts. It's one of the great contributions of New Zealand to world cuisine. It's called the pavlova. Now this is an absolute fairy tale of dessert. And I do it all the time in all the different seasons. And you think what goes into that. And it's just a bit of egg white and sugar. Now coming back to things too, when you're starting off with the kids, and for me, this is absolutely vital. There's nothing more vital than sitting down together at the dinner table. I think this is the most important thing of all because it's not just about it's not just about eating. It's about passing the food around. Thank you very much. It's about passing the food around. It's about communicating. It's about sharing your day and sharing everything possible. That's where it all starts from. The second biggest tip I can give to new parents who are having to, um, who are wondering how to get their feet, uh, kids eating good stuff is just get them drinking water at the table. It's the makes the biggest difference. Even if you give them juices, it fills them up, it bloats them out. I really notice this with my kids when they have juice or something like that. And keep them clear of any of the sweet fizzy drinks. I don't deal in extremes when it comes to food. I, I know that not, you know, not all of us can always afford to eat the, you know, the best ingredients. To, to, we don't have the time necessarily to shop for the best ingredients. In my latest book, I've, I've, I've said, no, no, th I mean, this is true. You just have to be realistic about it. But if you only say that, and when you deal in extremes, if you only say you have to have the best all of the time, what you do is you put an enormous amount of people off. I think what you need to do is encourage it. Encourage it by celebrating food. This is the ideal sort of scenario here. Getting to know new things, getting to try new things. And this has to start with the kids. And I think cooking, reading, and but then the whole glorious thing of sharing at the table. Start it off there. But when I'm talking about cooking with kids, you know, we get carried away. And often you see this thing. It's about making muffins. It's about making pancakes, about making cakes. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about everyday cooking with kids. Doing a little bit every day. And that could be spreading the butter on their bread for the sandwiches. Start kids off with wholemeal bread. They don't know what white bread is when they're tiny. And this is the thing about kids' food too. When I hear, my kids won't eat this, my kids won't eat that. It's about, I mean, that's kind of up to you as a parent, what your kids do and don't eat. And I'm saying that, 
And it sounds now like I'm really getting on my horse and starting to lecture. So I'm going to tell you a little story. When my youngest son was two, I'd just done a demonstration at his, uh, my eldest son's school. And we'd done these sort of um, vegetable tarts that we made a kind of wholemeal pastry for ourselves. And we had the different vegetables on top, a little bit of cheese, and it went very, very well. And I was in my local deli, and I was standing there with my arm sort of on the thing. You know how when guys boast, we always have our arm on something like that, boasting. And I was saying, it's down to the parents. You know, it's down to parenting. You've got to uh, make your kids eat the things that you want them to. Now, from that day to the next, my youngest son stopped eating anything that wasn't beige. And that lasted for about 18 months. Huh? So it was basically, the vi little victories I had would be things like wholemeal pasta. He would eat broccoli for some reason. He was eating tomatoes before that, but he wouldn't touch tomatoes, still doesn't with the kids one. But the other thing, drink water, eat together, and keep trying all the way along. But also keep them doing stuff, because that's how I got around that. And it took about 18 months. And I was thinking about this. Last night, we just had a roast chicken, some potatoes, some broccoli, and some salad. And now he's eating salad. And I got him to eat the salad because he likes the crunchy ones. He likes the ones with a big rib in the salad. So have that with some dressing on it. It's the leaves he can't cope with. It's because of his teeth. Okay, and it's learning things like this. And what I've done, you know, attach this book, Everybody Every Day. I've got a website, everybodyeveryday.co, where I've got pages upon pages of just things that I learned. Because the other thing is that what you don't want as a parent is people preaching at you. I'm not saying that anything works all of the time. What I'm saying is that you can try things, right? You can keep trying things. And if you have a night off, make it one night. Because for me, parenting, it's not the whole thing about being strict. It's the thing about being consistent. And it's the thing about getting kids excited. So whether it be buttering bread, squeezing a lemon, whether it be picking a leaf from a basil plant, whether it be pouring a bit of olive oil into a dressing. Kids love measuring things. Get them measuring things on scales with tablespoons. Get them cutting the butter. You know along the line with the butter where it says 50 grams or so? They can do that too. Making their sandwiches in the morning. Setting the tables. Pretend it's a little restaurant with them. Whatever you can do. It's all these little things that you do every day. It's great to make muffins. It's great to make a big mess in the kitchen. But all that does is it gets you nervous about the next time you're going to do it. The next time you're going to cook. Oh God, I'm going to have to clean up forever. It's not about that. It's about these wonderful little everyday things. Peeling vegetables. That's fantastic. Try and get them excited about washing dishes. Now, I think... It's at least five to 7,000 kids I've done cook-alongs with in the past seven or so years, okay? And I have not found one that's not been interested in some way of cooking and when you open up things to them, okay? So I think this is vital. Now, just the last thing I want to do here, we're going about eating together, drinking water, never stop trying, be consistent, that's fantastic. Get kids celebrating food, get them happy about food. The last thing, the one extreme that I have is to keep kids away from these fizzy drinks. Now, I'm just going to show you something and I want you to count along with me. Now, Okay, can everyone count? We're all good? We're not too many beers down the road? So we're going to start off like this. I'm going to get out of my bag here a 500 ml bottle of Coke. And how many spoonfuls of sugar do you think you get in one of these? 23. Oh, no, come on. You can't ruin it like that. You just ruin the whole thing. Nick, quiet. <laughs> Okay, so I just want you to count like I've got the measurement here because in there, and you see the other thing is someone lets them do this. They could make this a lot more clear. In here it says how much sugar there is, 26.5 grams per 250 mils, but there's 550 mils in there, so you have to look further over at the fine print to actually find out. So, we're going to start, you're going to start counting, and this is going to be the end of my rant. I'm going to let you guys finish it off for me. How many spoonfuls of sugar? Okay, go. Louder. <laughs> no, 23, you were exactly right because we measured it out already. Now, if you imagine every time that one of your kids is when they're thirsty, or one of you when you're thirsty, right? So what you're doing is you're sitting down at the table and you're hoovering up this much sugar as you go. It's quite incredible when you see it like that, isn't it? So if you're giving your kids things at the table that aren't water, okay, just think about this little one when you do it. But most of all, if you can, get kids to celebrate food and celebrate food yourselves and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much. My book's available at Stand 22 in the hall down there. Cheers.